All right, hey guys, and welcome back. As this week, I'm back with a review from a toy line I've done in the past, another great Masters of the Universe toy line review. And this time, we're gonna be taking a look at the line of uh, Loyal Subjects Masters of the Universe Action Vinyls Series 1. Now, um, first off, I have to say I do not have the whole line of the Series Wave 1 um, Action Vinyls. I have five figures here. A lot of them are really, really hard to get. Um, I'll show you what one of the boxes that I uh, kept um, left over looks like. This is one of the blind boxes. Some of them are clear on the front, so you actually know the figure um, that you're getting. And then we'll check out each one, and um, you know, we'll take a look at each one individually. All right, guys, so let's take a look at some of the figures I have here. Um, I only have five out of the set. But let's take a look at one of the boxes and we'll open it up and see what you would have gotten inside. Okay, so like I said before, this is one of the blind boxes that you would have gotten, obviously. And now some of them, they have the clear window, so that way you can see what figure that you're going to get inside. And this one just has the blacked out window, but it does tell you all of the figures along the sides here. Uh, which are Ram Man, Merman, I still want to pick him up and add him to my collection. Uh, Stinkor, Fisto, uh, Zodak, and then the 2003 uh, series Zodak variant. Uh, we got King Randor on the back, uh, the Sorceress, the Troll and Prisoner, uh, Gold Edition Orko, which these two are really, really rare. They're the chase figures out of the group. And then we have Battle Armor He-Man, Battle Cat, Panthor, which is near impossible to find, Battle Armor Skeletor, Orko, and the original Sorceress. Now this line did come out in 2018, so like I said, uh, early spring you're you know, seeing these in stores and I'm just getting around to uh, taking a look at these guys now, but um, you know, like I said, I think they're really cool. So we'll go ahead and open it, and this is what you would have uh, gotten when you opened up the box here. So we'll open this guy up, put that off to the side, and of course I already have this guy here. This is Battle Armor Skeletor, and you would have gotten a little uh, plastic baggie with all the weapons, which we'll go over in detail more in just a minute. This is just kind of to show you what get and how they're packaged inside of the box. And then what's really cool, I think, I don't know where I put the rest of these, but you get these little like trading cards, which is fun. And so this is one for Battle uh, Armor Skeletor, Evil Lord of Destruction. It goes into a description of how he created his battle armor and everything. And uh, then you have all the other figures on the back, so that's really fun. I have one for Stinkor, which I don't know where I put, and I have all the others, but I don't know where in the heck I put them at the moment, so. But really cool, it's a nice little fun pack-in that comes with all the figures. So front and center, let's take a look at He-Man himself here. And as you can see, they're, they're really, really nice um, vinyl pop figures. The hair looks a little funny, it almost looks like you can remove the hair but they have a lot of good articulation. So you have one with the head, uh, the arms, which move up and down, uh, both of the wrists, so that's one, uh, two, three, four, five with the wrists, and then they also swivel up the waist, which is five, and even as like a, it feels like he has a little spring, like he wants to do a, pow a little power punch. And then you have at the hips, which is six, at the knees, which is seven, and then at the feet, which is eight. So you get, you know, eight points of articulation. That's pretty good for a figure this small. And uh, this is all the weapons and accessories that he would have came with. Of course, he would have came with the power sword, his iconic battle axe and shield, the battle armor, which looks really great with the, uh, you know, the H on the front of it. And the faces do look a little different. I gotta say they get some, you know, they take some getting used to, but I think they still look good. And yeah, these are, these are really cool little figures. They don't always stand so great because they're very, very top heavy, uh, but they're still really fun. Now let's give him his power sword real quick. Yeah, check that out. Uh, 
I have the power. It's very nice. Very nice. I think it looks really, really good. And these guys, um, like when I picked them up at Walmart, I think, uh, I don't remember, were they five or eight dollars a piece? They're, they're, they're pretty cheap. Yeah, and like I said, you see there, they just, they fall over on a moment's notice. Like I know I bumped them, but it really doesn't take very, very much at all to knock them over. Like they seriously fall over at the drop of a hat. Um, so now moving along check out Ram Man here and again Ram Man I just never been a big Ram Man fan very very boring figure I got a duplicate of him I mean he looks good it's not that he looks bad he's super super top weight you can see even when I put him down he's already leaning and you know you can try to fix the feet but the problem is is the way that his legs are under here you can't move them enough to get the full range of motion so then he wants to, you know, fall over, so you have to compensate by, like, lifting his axe up or something, or just, you almost break the figure trying to get him to stand properly. I mean, he looks okay enough for Ram Man, I just don't think there's enough, um, facial expressions on him. And I think they went a little overkill on the head, I mean, I know that's his main feature, but... I mean, even in the cartoon or the regular toy, he's not this much head. Like, that, that's a lot of helmet. That's a lot of helmet going on. Um, so it looks good, but just a poorly designed figure. Does not stand well. You get his, you know, axe and everything. I mean, I guess he looks good enough if you're going to put him with your other toys, but, eh, you know, it, de definitely the lame duck out of the series. So not, not a big Ram Man fan definitely not in this Loyal Subject series either. See, I can't even get him to stand right there just trying to stand him up. Now, someone that does look amazing um, is Fisto. So this, this guy looks really, really fantastic. Um, I mean, just look at the facial features with the beard, you know, the eyebrows, the expression. He's got his iconic sword, you know, which that, that looks just like the original toy. He's got his large armored fist here, which I don't think you can turn this. Oh, you can. Okay, I didn't know if you could. So you can turn the fist. Yeah, there you go. He's ready to kick some butt. And he's got his uh, iconic armor and the boots. And this is just a really fantastic looking figure. I know he was one of the chase figures. Um, I mean, not really a chase figure, but he was definitely one of the harder ones a lot of people wanted to find. So, very nice. I mean, excellent support. Superb, superb, superb job on Fisto. It just looks fantastic. Without a doubt, one of my favorites. And we'll put him back over here. Alrighty, and now, of course, let's take a look at uh, Skeletor. You know, we already took a look at him before, but now let's get a more detailed look at him. He kind of has the same problem here, too, uh, but only with, the, with his head, that his head doesn't really go back that far because of his cowl that goes over it. But again, you know, a really nice looking figure. Um, he has the bat, you know, the horde, symbol of the battle armor, um, you know, battle, battle, battle armor damage there. He's got his Havoc staff. He looks pretty good, a little silly, doesn't look as menacing as it could be, I think, in my opinion, but still looks good. He's got his other half of the power sword, which a lot of people forget that Skeletor even has a half of the power sword. He never uses it, really, in the cartoons or the comics. Take a look at the back. Really nice. I think they could have blended the hood a little bit better. The face looks good. Very evil. I like how they did that. It looks really cool. And then his other weapons, of course, he has to have the... Uh, Battle Armor Skeletor Axe, which you don't see. A lot of people, you know, forget he even came with this in the original toys. That's really cool. And then this, unbelievably, that they gave a nod to this. This was just from a one-off episode um, where Skeletor just has, I don't remember the name of the episode, but he has just his own regular sword um, that he uses every now and then. And for them to include such an obscure nod like that is uh, really unexpected. So, fantastic, fantastic, great, great version of Skeletor here. Absolutely happy with that. So many accessories. And then, of course, 
just my favorite in general, one of my favorite all-time figures. And we've got Stinkor. And sometimes this is a figure that proves that simplicity really just wins out. I mean, there's nothing really special about Stinkor, but I think why Stinkor works as a figure to begin with is because he just has a really basic color scheme that grabs your eye. Um, you know, his, his, his buckler, you know, just a nice bright blue. Everything just draws your attention to, to focus on him. There's not a whole bunch of different things going on. It's just one unified theme. And, uh, you know, he's got that classic skunk, you know, same face as Merman face, but, you know, the white and black stripes, the fantastic orange armor, which, you know, has his rebreather because he can't even take his own, own stink. Let's get a look at the armor on the back, the stripes on the side of the arm, the stripe going down the back, and the buckler looks really good, you know. And like I said, there's really nothing that unique or special about this figure. It's just... He looks good. This is just a well-done stinker. There's, there's no complaints. You know, looks fantastic. Definitely one of my favorite uh, figures out of this whole series. All right, guys. Well, I hope you enjoyed taking a quick look at these Loyal Subjects action vinyl figures from 2018. I think they're really cool, and if you find some out in the wild, you know, at a flea market or if you're going by Walmart and see, you know, I believe Wave 2 should be out now, um, you know, definitely pick them up. Um, I don't advise getting the blind boxes. I, I really do not advise getting these because, number one, a lot of people, they just return them. Like, mine was all taped up because somebody obviously didn't want that figure and just returned it, which is, you know, kind of scummy because then people just, you know, you, you end up with a lot of doubles and then, you know, people just want to get that, that chase figure so they can throw it up on eBay. Um, I would say just, you know, get the ones in the clear window. At least you know what you're getting. But they're really fun. They're awesome little figures to collect and display. They look great. I totally recommend uh, picking them up. So until next time, guys, take care, and I will see you in the next one. Hey guys, if you liked the video that you just watched, don't forget to hit that subscribe button down below, and you can follow me at Facebook at Kinga Retro or Twitter at hashtag 8 Brian. See you next time.